The story of Attack on Titan revolves around the Eldian race, with the term becoming synonymous with subjects of Ymir over time. The Eldian race had not always been subjects of Ymir, but as the power of the Titans was passed down while Ymir was stuck in the paths, the Eldians wound up with her as their one common ancestor. This gave the entire race access to Titan powers, provided they were injected with the Titan Serum. Despite this, only a select few of Ymir's subjects could truly gain access to the full extent of her powers. These successors were the members of the Fritz lineage. They were the Eldians from the royal family, with their royal blood bringing them closer to Emir Fritz than any other being. As the story of the Titan race began with her very powers being passed down among Eldian royalty who took part in cannibalism. In this video, we're going to take a look at every member of that royal family from 2,000 years ago, all the way to the present. Who are the Fritz family? The original royal family of Eldia from the past of the main story, the Fritz family held the founding Titan and passed it down to newer generations every 13 years. What's interesting here is that while the power of the founder refers to the founder Ymir, the name Fritz, which is now so closely associated with Ymir's powers, is not a name that belongs to her per se. It belongs to the Eldian king, who had enslaved Ymir and eventually married her. There have been several generations of the family across 2,000 years who have wielded the founding Titan. Although the Titan can fall into the hands of someone without royal blood, they will not be able to access those powers, at least not by themselves. This is because one would need to have a more direct connection to the founder in order to use her powers. Technically, the royal family is Ymir's immediate family. And while everyone is her subject, only the Eldian royalty are her true descendants. It's kind of like the head family versus branch family concept that is prevalent among clans. After the Eldian Empire was segregated to live within the walls erected around Paradise Island, the Fritz family took up the name Rhys and erected a false monarchy with the name Fritz to operate as the king or queen that the people would look up to. While we are not made aware of every monarch across every year since the onset of this story, there are several members of the royal family whom we do know of. In this video, we will talk about every such member in a serial order, employing a way that will help streamline the events of the story better with respect to its royal characters and their connection to the founder. Number 1. King Fritz 2,000 years prior to the events of Attack on Titan's first season, Eldia was a tribe ruled by a man named Fritz. He had enslaved many people and cut their tongues off. He was cruel, ruthless, and tyrannical. Previously, he had put a hit out on Ymir for freeing one of the pigs from his pig pen. However, after she gained the power of the Titans, he made use of her abilities to expand the Eldian Empire by slaughtering his enemies and conquering other lands. He went on to reward her by making her his wife wife, and together they had three daughters. He was unfaithful to her, however, and following her death, refused to give her a proper burial. Instead, his power-hungry self was more concerned with keeping the power of the Titans intact. For this, he coerced their daughters to consume their mother's corpse and gain the power of the Titans. King Fritz was the one who kickstarted the cannibalistic rituals that Titans partook in. It was also his tyrannical policies that were carried down by the future rulers of Eldia which caused the people of the world to suffer and eventually resent the Empire. Fritz's ultimate wish was for Eldia to rule over the world for all of eternity using the power of the Titans. Number 2. Ymir Fritz Before acquiring the name Fritz, Ymir was a slave to the Eldian king of her time. Having fallen into a mysterious body of water within a tree while trying to run for her life from the king's hunters, Ymir acquired the power of the Titans as the source of all living matter attached itself to her spine. Despite becoming the founding Titan, Ymir went back to the king to serve him instead of choosing freedom, as a life of enslavement had taken her free will away. She only lived to serve the king and subsequently followed his ruthless policies to help expand the Eldian Empire. She became his concubine and unfortunately fell in love with the cruel king who could not have cared less about her well-being. Thirteen years after becoming the founding titan, Ymir Fritz intercepted an assassination attempt made towards the king and died in the process. Not because the blow was lethal to her, but because she had lost the will to live. Due to her desiring freedom but not having the will to pursue it, she was stuck in a mysterious reality known as the Paths. As more and more Eldians consumed the corpses of Titan Shifters, the single coordinate in the Paths branched out into a tree, creating a long lineage of Ymir's subjects who could turn into Titans if Ymir willed it. Meanwhile, Ymir gained the power to control all of her subjects, be it mentally or anatomically. 
When her subjects with the abilities of Titan Shifters evoked their powers, Ymir created their Titan bodies from scratch. She was responsible for the Titans being able to regenerate themselves, and she was also the one behind the creation of the pure Titans. However, she never did it out of her own desire, but because, in a sense, her assistance had been called for, and Ymir did not know of anything beyond being of service. The founding Titan was passed down among the Fritz family only, and every royal who acquired this Titan gained access to Ymir's abilities via the paths. Having become the founding titan, they could make Ymir do anything they wanted her to do. Meanwhile, time worked differently in the paths, and what felt like mere seconds in the physical world could be months, if not years, in Ymir's realm. Being stuck in time forever was what made Ymir's character even more tragic. In the end, she was freed by Eren and Mikasa, as Ymir herself had picked Mikasa to be the person who would end her eternal curse, since both of them were tied down by their love for the king and Eren respectively. However, unlike Ymir, Mikasa loving Eren was a result of her free will, and it was this very freedom that allowed Mikasa to choose against it in order to end the rumbling. In a way, Mikasa, being Ymir's antithesis in terms of the narrative, was what allowed Ymir to finally be free, as Eren died in Mikasa's arms. Number 3. Maria Fritz She was one of the three daughters founder Ymir had with the king. She was also one of the first people after Ymir to acquire the power of the Titans, as she was forced to cannibalize the corpse of her mother by her father. Later, the walls surrounding Shiganshina district and the outer walls of Paradise Island were named after her. Number 4. Rosé Fritz Rosé was in the same boat as Maria Fritz as the two were siblings. The walls surrounding districts such as Utopia and Trost were named after Rosé Fritz. Number 5. Sheena Fritz The third child of Emir Fritz and siblings to Maria and Rosé, Sheena also consumed her mother's corpse with her sisters. The walls protecting the royal capital within the walls were named after her. All three sisters were revered by the island's religious faction as they were considered to be gods. The residents did not know the truth about the walls, at least not for the longest time, nor did they know anything about those the walls were named after. Number 6. Carl Fritz Several years passed between the era of King Fritz, Emir Fritz, Maria, Rosé, and Sheena, where several rules acquired the founding titan and ruled over the mighty Eldian Empire. Eventually, Carl Fritz became the 145th ruler of Eldia. However, he was unlike any of the previous rulers. A pacifist by heart, Karl Fritz disagreed with the cruelties his empire had inflicted upon the world. He sympathized with the Marlians, who had suffered terribly due to Eldia, and detested his ancestors. Guilt resulted in him conspiring with the Tiber family to weaken Eldia enough for Marley to be able to take back their land. While Karl Fritz held the opinion that the world would have been better off without the Titans, the Eldian noble houses were engaged in a civil war known as the Great Titan War. Karl Fritz used this war to his advantage and, with the Tibers, created the story of a false Marlian hero named Helos for the world to dote upon. While people were made to believe that Helos led Marley to its freedom, Karl Fritz relocated to an island towards the east of the mainland with the subjects of Ymir. He then used his powers as the holder of the founding titan to erect the walls using countless hardened colossal titans. Meanwhile, seven out of the nine titan shifters were made to fall into the hands of the Marlian military, with the Tiber family retaining the Warhammer Titan and siding with Marley. Although Karl Fritz sided with the history of his own kind, he wished for his people to live out their lives in peace. So, he issued an ultimatum to the outside world, where attacks targeted towards the island would result in the unleashing of the millions of titans within the walls to flatten the earth. This was a bluff, however, as in reality, Fritz made a vow to renounce war with the founding titan that he held. He did this so that his successors would never gain access to the founder's true power and use it to wage war against the world as a means of retaliation. Even if the walls were attacked at some point, his successors would be tied up by this very vow to accept Eldia's demise. All in all, the king believed that Eldians could not atone for their sins anymore. They could and should only accept it. Not every Eldian wished to move to paradise, however, and some of them stayed back hoping to reclaim their glory someday. Those who did move within the walls had their memories altered by Karl Fritz, who used Ymir's powers to erase their knowledge of the outside world or any history that predated the creation of the walls and their lives within the island. Meanwhile, the royal family held the founding titan and passed it down for generations. For protection, they put a false king with the name of Fritz on the throne and renamed themselves the Rees family. Unfortunately for him, the Ackermans and the Asian clan were immune to his mind-bending powers and they went on to oppose the king's ideology to accept the demise of the Eldians if the time came. 
they also stood against his decision to take away people's memories. As retaliation, the king ordered the extermination of these clans. When his 13 years as the founding titan came to a close, Carl Fritz passed his titan down to his successor, and every subsequent wielder of the founding titan was bound by his vow that renounced war. As the next wielders acquired the founding titan, their eyes were altered as a visual depiction of them being bound to King Carl Fritz's will. Number 7. Dina Fritz Unlike the descendants of the royal family within the walls, those who remained back in the outside world continued to use the name Fritz. Many wished for Eldia to return to its former glory, but they managed to achieve nothing. In the end, they were hunted down and executed. It was not until the year 824 that Grisha Jaeger became part of the Restorationist faction, with several other Eldians in Marley's internment zone. There, we were introduced to the last remaining mainland Eldian who had descended from the royal family. Dina Fritz. Dina and Grisha met one another while working as Eldian Restorationists, and they fell in love. The couple eventually got married and had Zeke, who they forced to become a warrior in order to further their agenda of restoring Eldian. However, Zeke could not cope with the tremendous pressure his parents put on him, and eventually ratted them out to the military. The Restorationists, including Dina, were tortured for information and taken to a platform not far away from Walmaria. Minus Grisha, everyone had the Titan Serum injected into them, and in the process, Dina turned into a pure Titan. She roamed outside the walls for several years while Grisha lived within them with his new family. After the Armored and the Colossal Titans breached the walls in the year 845, Dina's smiling Titan appeared in the Shiganshina district and was directed by future Eren to eat Karla Jaeger to cause the trauma which was necessary to radicalize the 10-year-old Eren. The Smiling Titan reappeared in the last episode of Season 2, where Reiner and Bertholdt were trying to take Eren to Marley for having the attack and the Founding Titan. Hanes tried to take out the Smiling Titan, but he was martyred in battle against it, with Dina's Titan claiming the lives of two adults who Eren dearly cared about. In an attempt to save Mikasa himself and his squad in general, Eren punched Dina's hand. Because Dina was a Titan of royal blood and Eren unknowingly had the founding Titan whose powers he could not access due to not being royalty, touching Dina led to him gaining temporary access to the Founder's abilities, without being tied down by Carl Fritz's vow. Eren used the moment to subconsciously control the other Titans around Around them, who were then made to take Dina Fritz's Titan out. Number 8. Zeke Jaeger Born in Marley's internment zone to Grisha Jaeger and Dina Fritz, Zeke grew up under immense pressure that was put on him by his parents to become a warrior and help the Restorationists overthrow the Marleyan government, putting Eldians back in power. While the world was under the assumption that, like every Eldian in Marley, Zeke was put in the warrior program for his family to gain the status of honorary Marleyans. The reality was that the Jaeger Fritz family wanted him to become a warrior to act as a spy for the Restorationists. While his parents fed him stories of Eldia being a great empire that was wrongfully taken down, the default story fed to the Marleyans was quite the opposite. Eldians themselves believed that their ancestors were devils, to say the least, and that Marley was on the right side of history. In fact, Zeke would often hear his grandparents tell him stories about Eldia's crimes against the world. The constant mistreatment Zeke faced at the hands of his parents, in particular Grisha, distanced him from them. Zeke also had a hard time keeping up with his peers in the Warrior Candidate program, but his troubles began to decrease as he grew closer to Tom Kassaver, who possessed the Beast Titan back. He often played catch with Kassaver and was complimented on his pitching skills. Kassaver was also someone who was invested in Titan science research and introduced the concept of making the subjects of Ymir incapable of reproduction using the Founder's powers to Zeke. One day, Zeke accidentally overheard details about the Marleyan authorities coming close to discovering the hideout of the Restorationists. He knew that this would doom his entire family as they would be turned into pure titans at the border of paradise. An isolated Zeke eventually revealed this to Kassaver, who had become a father figure to him. Kassaver advised that if Zeke turned his parents in, he and his grandparents would become exempt from punishment. So, Zeke ratted Grisha, Dina, and the Restorationists out. Meanwhile, Marley allowed Zeke to be raised by his grandparents while being oblivious to Zeke being of royal blood. While Zeke did not believe in his parents' extremist methods, he did sympathize with the Eldian race and wanted the remaining Eldians, both in and out of Marley, to live out their lives in peace, much like Carl Fritz himself. The best way to attain this would be by making the race incapable of reproduction, which could be done if the Founder's powers were used to alter the anatomy of the present-day Eldians. This would let the world know that the race would eventually come to an end and they would not have to worry about a future rumbling. 
At some point, he made a vow to Cassaver that he would take back the founding titan from paradise and learn that to gain access to the founder's powers and to bypass Carl Fritz's vow of peace, a titan shifter of royal blood would have to come into contact with the shifter of the founding titan, with the latter not being royalty. For this, however, he would have to convince the latter to join his cause. Zeke went on to inherit the beast titan from Cassaver and learned that injecting his titan blood or spinal fluid into subjects of Ymir allowed him to turn Eldians into pure titans and even control them with his screams. However, he never disclosed the truth about his royal lineage to the Marleyan authorities. As Paradise Island Operation was launched, he stayed back in Marley, but eventually started partaking in their operation to reclaim the Founder. He learned about Grisha's other son within the walls, Eren, and the two brothers started collaborating during Eren's stay in Marley. Eren played along with Zeke's plan, and the two brothers came into contact during the War for Paradise arc, where Eren revealed that he never had plans of siding with Zeke and only used him to gain access to Ymir's powers. In the end, Zeke never managed to fulfill his dream, but he did get an apology from Grisha while traveling through Eren's memories. His life was brought to a close by Levi Ackerman, who had promised Erwin Smith that he would kill the Beast Titan. Number 9. Rod and Yuri Reese's Father he was one of the several kings within the Walls who operated prior to the events of Attack on Titan. He was bound to the will of Karl Fritz, which resulted in him acquiring dark and vacant eyes after he became the founding Titan. He was the father of Rod Rees, that is, Historia's father, and Yuri Rees, the king Kenny Ackerman had become the right-hand man of. Historia, Frida, and the rest of their siblings were his grandchildren. Rod and Yuri's father did not wish to eliminate Titans from the world and believed that the Titan rule was the key to finding true peace. His children opposed this ideology, as humanity within the walls desperately wanted the Titans to be eliminated. He passed down his Titan to Yuri Reese when he was about to be done with his 13 years of life. Number 10. Rod Reese. He was the eldest son of his father and the true king of the walls during the events of the first three seasons of Attack on Titan. As the father of Historia, he wished for his daughter to consume the possessor of the founding Titan as it would bring the founder back to the royal family. Since his childhood, Rod and Yuri would beg their father to rid the world of Titans, oblivious to him being bound by Karl Fritz's vow. He would even pester his father to do so, which led to Rod being locked up behind bars more than once. After Yuri gained the founding titan from their father, a look into his brother's new eyes made him realize that Yuri had become an all-knowing god. As such, Rod devoted himself to protecting this very god. He eventually had five children, namely Frida, Dirk, Erklin, Florian, and Abel. He went on to have a sixth daughter with one of his maids, who gave birth to Historia Reese. Being an illegitimate child, she was not raised as royalty with her siblings. On the day Shiganshina fell to the Titans, Rod prayed in the underground chapel with the Reese family, except Historia. However, he did not anticipate the attack that was carried out by Grisha under the commands of a future Eren. In the attack, everyone except Rod lost their lives as he managed to escape. Since Frida held the founding Titan and was the queen, her death led to the Rod becoming the king. Rod then retrieved Historia to make her live with him. However, after a raid conducted by the military police in Kenny Ackerman, Rod claimed to not know her and her mother. While his mistress was killed, Rod proposed for Historia to be sent to the Survey Corps, as it was a given that anyone joining that faction would eventually die in battle. However, he had done this to save her life. He eventually learned about the founding Titan falling into the hands of Grisha's son, Eren, and began to work behind the scenes to retrieve him and Historia. Kenny's squad was made to kidnap the two of them, and Eren was subsequently chained in the underground chapel. Rod revealed the truth about Eren's father to Historia and made her witness the memories of Grisha killing Frida to radicalize his illegitimate daughter. He also told Historia about how she did not remember her kind sister Frida because the latter had seemingly erased her memories. Rod had access to Titan serums, such as the one that could turn Eldians into pure Titans and other serum types, such as the Armor Serum. He wished to inject the first type into Historia and make her eat the restrained Eren. He even told her the truth about the Founding Titan's powers and how it would lie dormant within Eren because he was not of royal blood. However, Historia broke the Titan Serum and tried to free Eren, with the both of them eventually being rescued by the Survey Corps. Desperate to not let his dream die out, Rod licked the serum off the floor and turned into the most abnormal looking Titan in the series. He intended to consume the Founding Titan himself, but his efforts continued to be deterred by the Survey Corps and a newly freed Eren. His pure Titan was also twice the size of the Colossal Titan, and it was eventually blown apart into bits, but his nape remained intact. 
To prevent him from regenerating, the members of the Survey Corps began to take him out in bits and pieces, with Historia slicing the nape region and gaining the support of the people for killing the aberrant Titan. This brought Rod's life to an end, and Historia became the queen within the walls. Number 11. Yuri Rees. Rod's younger brother and one of the holders of the founding Titan, Yuri Rees used to be the true king of the walls, with Kenny Ackerman acting as his best friend. Like a younger Rod, Yuri wished to rid the world of Titans. However, his mentality changed as he gained the founding Titan from his father, with him acquiring all the memories of the past wielders as well as Carl Fritz's vow of peace. One look into his eyes allowed Rod to realize that Yuri inherited their father's pacifist ideology, which was shared by every king or queen within the walls who wielded the founder's powers. Similarly, Yuri, who now knew the truth of the world, had no intentions of returning the people's memories to them. In the meantime, Kenny Ackerman had been tracking down members of the military and the royal family to avenge the Ackerman clan, as they were being exterminated for turning against the crown's ideologies. He managed to figure out that Yuri Reese was the true king and attempted to kill him. However, his efforts were thwarted by Yuri, who beat Kenny in his Titan form. Yuri accepted Kenny's rage since the Ackerman deserved to resent the monarchy and even apologized to him. Kenny was surprised to see the king bowing before him, which became an act that led to the two of them becoming best of friends. As Kenny started operating on Yuri's bodyguard as well, Yuri called for a cease on the hit put out on the Ackermans. Sometime during his life, Yuri told Kenny that the world would be led to its ruin in the near future. As his 13-year-old life closed in on its end, Yuri was chained underneath the Reese Chapel and fed to his niece, Frida Reese. Number 12. Frida Reese. The eldest daughter of Rod Reese, Frida became the true Queen of the Walls sometime during the year 842 and retained her position till the day Shiganshina fell. She was also the last wielder of the Founding Titan among those who only possessed the Founder. After her passing, the Founding Titan fell to the wielders of the Attack Titan, with the two Titans somewhat merging within the same human. Frida was Historia's half-sister and genuinely cared for her, even when Historia lived away from the Reese family due to being an illegitimate child of Rod's. She taught Historia how to read and write. While Historia somewhat idolized her, Frida removed Historia's memories of their bond and herself as a whole to protect her younger sister. She eventually volunteered to succeed Yuri and became the next founding Titan. With that, she received Yuri's memories, the memories of the world before the walls, and the will of Carl Fritz. As a result, she became one of the many monarchs who did not wish to rid the world of Titans or return the memories of the people back to them. This went against her original personality, as in one of Rod's memories, Historia witnessed Frida tell him that she would never give in to the ghosts of her ancestors. Needless to say, she gained the same eyes as Yuri, which signified that she now held the pacifist ideology of Carl Fritz. She was present in the chapel with the rest of the Reese family on the day Wal Maria fell. As Grisha appeared in front of them, he pleaded with the Reeses for Frida to protect the people against Titan invasion. As Carl Fritz never wished to fight back against the attack sent by Marley, Frida refused to go ahead with Grisha's wish as well. In fact, she was willing to do so in the beginning because that is what the real Frida would have wanted. However, the vow forced her mind to change, and she spoke about how humanity within the walls was destined to perish, so as to protect the world outside. Eventually, she was forced into a duel against Grisha's attack titan, where she was defeated. Following this, the founding titan was consumed by Grisha, who slaughtered her siblings as well, with Rod Rhys managing to escape. Grisha was then consumed by Eren, with Eren becoming the last wielder of the founding titan. Number 13. Erklin Reese. The oldest son of Rod Reese and his wife, Erklin Reese was present at the underground chapel where Grisha fought Frida. He had also witnessed Uri Reese's death during the Founding Titan's passing ceremony. He died on the day Shiganshina fell as he was squeezed to death in Grisha's hands. Number 14. Dirk Reese. The youngest son of Rod Reese, Dirk was present with Erklin as they witnessed Uri getting eaten by their sister Frida. After the attack led by Grisha, Dirk passed away as Grisha crushed him with his hands. Number 15. Abel Reese. Abel was one of the Reese siblings who witnessed Frida eat Uri to become the founding titan. She was later crushed to death by Grisha in the underground chapel. Number 16. Florian Reese. The youngest daughter of Rod Rees and his wife, Florian was older than her half-sister Historia by only a day. She was not present during the ceremony where Frida acquired the founding Titan. She was later killed as Grisha Yeager stomped her with her mother when he attacked the Rees family. 
Number 17, Historia Reese. Before becoming the Queen of the Walls, Historia used to be known as Krista Lenz. After her mother was murdered and she was denounced by Rod Reese in front of the military police, she was made to renounce her real name of Reese and enter military service as Krista. Historia was born on a farm in northern Walshina where her mother's family worked. While she grew up away from the Reese family and had a very distant mother, she was administered by Frida Reese from time to time, whom Historia deeply bonded with before Frida took away her memories. Historia would occasionally access these memories in her dreams, but often forgot about them once she awoke. As stated in Rod Reese's section, Historia was sent to enlist as a soldier. During her training program, she pretended to be the kind and selfless person as Krista that Frida had taught her to be. However, she grew close to a girl named Ymir, not the founder, during this time, who was aware of Krista being a fake name and also knew that her entire personality was a facade. Due to Ymir's influence and her near-death experience at the Utgard Castle, where Ymir revealed her secret as she turned into the Jaw Titan, Krista finally confessed to her real name being Historia. At the same time, Hanji was also trying to get her hands on more information ever since she realized that the walls were made of colossal titans. This led to the revelation that Historia was the true heir to the throne and that Rhys was the true royal family. The Survey Corps, under Erwin Smith's command, eventually launched a coup d'etat to remove the fake Fritz family from the throne for Historia to become queen. Meanwhile, Historia had been captured by Rod Rhys to consume Eren and reclaim the founding titan, but she refused to do so, as she finally dropped her mask and claimed that she was not selfless, but the worst girl in the world. She then sliced off the nape of pure titan Rod Rhys and claimed her spot as the true queen within the walls. Due to her actions of saving people from Rod's titan, she was heartily accepted by the public. During her coronation ceremony, while the members of the Survey Corps kissed her hand, it brought her into physical contact with Eren, who held the founding titan. Since Historia was of royal blood, Eren suddenly gained access to the memories from the underground chapel where he witnessed his future self coercing his own father to slaughter the Reeses. After the time skip, Historia became more prominently present as a political figure in Attack on Titan. From the Haizuru ambassadors, she learned that her inheriting the Beast Titan and having several children in those 13 years of life as the Beast Titan would ensure the safety of Paradise. This would create several royal-blooded children who would continue to inherit the Beast Titan and safeguard the island while Paradise took its time catching up to the world. However, these plans went against Aarons, who wanted to ensure a long and peaceful life away from the curse of the Titans for all of his friends. While Historia was not unwilling to go forward with the plan, Eren revealed his intention to cause the rumbling to her, which she heavily disagreed with. She decided to get pregnant, and Yelena theorized that it was done to delay her from inheriting Zeke's Beast Titan. Three years after the rumbling, Historia got heavily involved in peaceful negotiations with the outside world. Number 18, Historia's Child. The Eldian government wanted Historia to eat Zeke, although Zeke was conspiring with Eldia. This was because they did not trust Zeke at all and wished for his powers to fall into the hands of their queen. They wanted to make her collaborate with Eren so that they could maintain the founding titan's powers to cause the rumbling. They also wanted her to have as many children as she could so that this chain could be maintained, with the threat of the rumbling being used to protect Paradise Island. As Zeke came from Marley, Historia fell into a predicament, and Eren did not wish for her to live out her life as livestock. So, Historia decided to have a child with one of the farmer boys who used to bully her when they were kids at the farm. The military, however, was not happy about Historia's pregnancy, as it thwarted their plans for her to become the Beast Titan. She went into labor during the rumbling, and married her child's father three years after the Omnicide. At present, Historia lives a peaceful and content life with her daughter. Marvelous Verdict This centuries-long family tree surrounds the very story of Attack on Titan. While Eren is the epicenter of it all, he finds his greatest freedom and the biggest obstacle in not being of royal blood. The only way he can use this freedom of will to his advantage is by working alongside those who have royal blood, that is, those who are descendants of Fritz. With this, he narratively overwrites Carl Fritz's pacifist vow with his desire for violence and freedom and manages to create his own story from scratch, leading it to its cathartic end. And with that, today's video comes to an end. What do you think of the Fritz and Reese family? Did you enjoy the video? If so, then don't forget to like and comment down below. Until next time, thanks for watching, stay safe out there, and have a marvelous day.